Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're going to be looking at a challenge that came across in the response box from Hack the Box. Um, this is one of the harder boxes and one of the cooler boxes I've done on Hack the Box. Um, but the challenge is I've got a PCAP that has meterpreter traffic in it, and it's encrypted. And I've also got a core dump of the meterpreter binary as it's running. And so what I'm going to do is write, is, is analyze and write Python to go through and pull apart the meterpreter data, decrypt it, and uh, present a series of, you know, analyze the series of commands and things that it's doing to understand and eventually pull out the the, uh, the file that it's transmitting. So um, we're not actually going to get to quite pulling out the file, but we'll see exactly where it is and we'll see the PK data and we could handle it from there. So um, it's I, I thought this was super fun. I really enjoyed the challenge and uh, I hope you do too. All right, to start, let's take a look at the files we got here. We have a core.autoupdate. So basically that's a core dump from the running um, malware file, meterpreter file, and then we have msf.pcap. Um, in the in this challenge, we're actually given a bigger pcap that has a few hundred streams that show all the whole attack. Um, I've used T-Shark to just whittle that down to just the one stream that is the meterpreter traffic, so that's what we're going to work with in this video. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and check out, uh, let's see, I guess we'll run, we'll run VS Code here to get this open and we'll start, uh, we'll start working. I'm going to create a parse msf.py. And we'll come over here and we'll start with our shebang user bin and Python 3. Um, and I'm going to work with scapey here. And it's really, in general, bad practice to do this um, from something import star. Um, it's just very unpythonic, but it's the way scapey works, and you really kind of need it with scapey. So um, it just gets really ugly if you don't. So anyway, we're going to read uh, the pcap. And we're just going to hard code that in here. So we're just working with msf.pcap. And, and so like, because I imported it as star, like VS code doesn't know what read pcap is. And so it doesn't, it shows it as like questionable, right? So um, that it's annoying with the editors like this, but again, you gotta deal with it. Um, Meterpreter data runs in packets and that's at a layer seven packets, which is different and may not be aligned with like your typical TCP IP packets. And so you really want to look at the data coming from the client or from the server as a stream. Um, and as long as they're not talking at the same time, you can look at it as one big stream. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, you should just know if you're ever parsing this, that you could, this could lead to some messed up data. So if it's looking weird, you might want to split that apart. Um, but for now, I'm just going to collect all that into one stream. And to do that, we're going to do my favorite here, list comprehension. So we'll say, uh, let's see. Let's start with packet for packet in pcap. And now what I really want, I don't want the packet. I want the packet uh, TCP payload. So we'll start with TCP and we'll do payload like that. But now we don't want this to fail if we have, now I, I, because of the way we pulled this into a TCP stream, we should be fine, but just good practice is to say if TCP in packet like this. So now we have, we're only gonna have packets that have TCP layers. Now we get that. Um, now this actually still prints like an object, but if we uh, convert it to bytes, we will get the raw byte stream out of that payload. So that'll work. Um, now this will give us a list of for each packet in the IP TCP IP packet, we will get a string of the bytes of the payload. We want to put all that in one big stream. So we're going to just have an empty byte stream and we'll just do a dot join like that. And we've got, we should have our stream. Um, I'll save this and we'll open up a terminal and we can check it out. We can do Python minus I to keep the interpreter open once it finishes. And now we would do parse MSF and we run and we can look at like, what's the len of stream, stream, stream. So we got data there. We can do like uh, stream, I don't know, what's the first hundred bytes? Um, nothing recognizable, but that's okay. We don't expect that at this point. Um, so now we're gonna start going through and looking for packets. And so the structure of a Metasploit interpreter metal, I guess is the other term for it, um, packet, is that the first 32 bytes is kind of a header. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with i equals zero, and we're going to sort of step through this stream. So we'll say while i is less than len of stream, and let's see, we'll go ahead and get the header. Now the entire packet is XORed by an XOR key, and each packet has a unique XOR key. Um, so we're going to call this like the XOR header, and that's going to be stream, uh, I to I plus 32. So we're going to grab from wherever we are, we're going to grab the next 32 bytes and save that as XOR header. Uh, the XOR key is going to be stream, I guess we can, we can now call it XOR header. Uh, and that is going to be the first four bytes. So like that. 
So now we've got the first four bytes. Um, we now want to apply that to the rest of the header. And so I'm going to come here and make a quick XOR function. Seems like the easiest way to do it. We'll take a buffer and a key. And then we can do byte B for B in buffer. So let's go through all our bytes. And we don't really want B. We want B XOR with key. And then we want to get the offset, right? So the first byte gets the first byte of the key. The second byte gets the second byte of the key, etc. So what we'll do is we'll come here and we'll do enumerate on the buffer. And now buffer is going to return a couple of two things. So we'll have, whoa, I did not mean to do that. Let's try this again, uh, like that. So now for each byte, we'll get the offset into the file, into the buffer that it is, zero, one, two, three, counting up, and the byte itself. And then we'll XOR it with the byte, and then the key sub i. But we don't want i, we want i mod, I don't need the mod there, len key. So basically what, we'll do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna you know, that'll basically say one zero one two three zero one two three zero one two three over and over again. Um, that all looks pretty good. Um, now we just need to join that into a buffer and return. So now we have our XOR function. Okay, so back down here, let's go ahead and make uh, header is equal to XOR, XOR header, comma, XOR key. Beautiful. So now we should have the plain text header. So the, the rest of the header is four things. The first thing is called a session GUI, or GUID. Um, and that is going to be the next 16 bytes. So we can say head, um, the first four is the key, the, the XOR key. So now we're gonna be starting at four through 20. Um, and there's actually, you know, we can make this kind of pretty if we want. We can do import UUID, and we can come down here and say, not header, it's head, not head header. We can say UUID dot UUID bytes equals like that. And that'll give us like a formatted UUID out of it. Um, not important, but you know, looks nice. Um, we'll get next thing is an encryption flag. And that is going to be the next four bytes. Um, and we're gonna treat that as an integer. So we'll start off with header, um, where are we? We're at 20 to 24. And now we wanna change that to an integer from bytes. So we can do int, uh, from bytes like that. And we just have to tell it that it's a big endian like there. And we'll do the same thing for the next uh, two values. So the next one is going to be packet length. And that will go from 24 to 28. And then this one will go from 28 to 32. And that will be packet uh, type. And so now we've parsed the full header. Um, what follows is gonna be all the data in that packet, but we're gonna ignore that for now. Let's, let's just worry about getting each packet we have. So we can do um, print, let's print like a nice string here. So we can do uh, packet type is equal to packet type. And we'll make this look prettier in just a second, but let's start with len is equal to uh, packet len. And let's see, what's next? We wanna do uh, maybe the encryption equals ENC flag like that. And then we will do, what do we have left? Um, we've hit type lang, uh, oh, good. Sess equals um, session good. And with any luck, we should parse, this should parse through the whole PCAP or the whole stream, getting us um, all the packets. If we have any problem, let's see. Bytes like object, expected by self object in found. Let's see, where do we have that file? Um, oh, we're up here, sorry, up here and here. Um, let's see, we need our XOR function. So we have key of I something. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do anything to that? Oh, we probably need to convert it to bytes. Um, let's do that. We can, oh, I think we can even just do, here, why don't we do this? I think we can do this on the buffer of, a, bu a buffer of ints, if we convert it to bytes, we can just do it that way. Let's try that. Yeah, that's looking good. Oh, but we have a problem. Um, we are not, <laughs> we, we forgot to, so we are in a while loop where we never increment i. Let's come down here. Now i is going to, going, we're gonna add to it, because now we've processed that. And where are we gonna go? Well, we're gonna wanna go to the end of this packet. And this packet is, packet length bytes long. And that actually starts from packet length. So 
we actually have 24 bytes in at that point, so we have to go 24 more um, to get to the next packet. So now, if we run that, we do have an end. That's great. So let's let's take a look at this and take a look at our packets. Um, we can, what can we notice? We can notice right away the encryption's off for the first two, and then it turns on. Um, we can notice the session is not initialized, and then it gets initialized. Um, we can notice it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 over and over again. So that's um, interesting. Um, there's a few things we can clean up here, actually. For one, let's go ahead and try to do some, let's add some spacing in here so we have this working nice. Um, say our packet length is going to be left justified and like, what do you think? Like, I mean, we make long ones. We have some long ones in here. Yeah, we do. Um, let's make it eight. Um, our encryption flag is going to, that's looking fine. That might be all we need actually for that part. Um, oops, let's run this again and see. So we're looking better on the spacing. Um, the other thing is, like this type, we can look this up. And this is where we'll jump into, oops, I don't need this open, the metal source code. Um, if we come here and we go to metal source, and let's see, this is going to be in TLV type studies, I believe. Let's see. Yep, so right up here at the top. So we have a packet type request and a packet type response. And that is uh, one and zero. So those are the two we're seeing um, for packet type. So we can come up here and we can say, um, I can put this in the same thing. I'm actually going to go ahead and, well, we'll do, yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and start a, another file and we'll call it like msf consts.py. And we're going to end up adding to this over the course of the thing. So we'll come in here and this one's short enough that we can just, um, let's see. Uh, ELV packet type equals, and then we will say zero, and we'll call, let's make this, we can make this, um, we just want enough that we can see it, request one, uh, it, it response, let's make, I guess three characters, uh, let's put the P in there, it'll look nicer, and oops. And uh, like that. And so now if we come back up here and we say from MSF cons import uh, TLV packet types. And now we come down here and instead of printing the packet type, we print TLV packet types of packet type. And we save this and we run, oops, we run, I should probably get rid of that I. Now we're getting a nice uh, request and response there. Um, we're going to want to set this size so we can now make it always be four bytes and run that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this dash I because we're not playing with that right now. So that's looking better. Um, Encryption is sort of the same thing. Um, if we come, this one is in uh, crypto something, C-R-Y, crypto T-L, this looks good. Um, so here we are, the options are none and AES-256 for one and zero. So we'll do the same thing over here, um, ENC types. And so zero is none and one is AES-256. That's all we need. So we'll come back up here. We can now import ENC types. I called it. Should, I called it ENV, but I meant to call it ENC, so I'll come back there. That should look good now. Um, and now we come down to our print as well, and we say, here we say uh, ENC types sub encryption block like that. And now we run this, and we have AES 256 looking good in there. Um, again, we probably want to make this always be six bytes, so we can do six like that. And now we have a nice lined up and it's looking good. Um, so, so far we've passed, we parsed these packet headers. Did that three times fast. Um, so now we want to get into the data and the data is under this format they call TLV. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and well, before we advance I, but after we print our thing, well, let's do another loop over our TLV data. So our TLV, if I can type it right, data is going to be, um, string from i plus 32 to i plus packet len plus 24, right? So we're getting all the data to the next packet. Um, but we need to XOR this. So we'll come in here and that's our buffer. So we can say XOR 
And we can say the key is going to still be XOR key. And now we've got our TLB data. Um, if encryption, encryption flag is equal to one, if the encryption flag is equal to one, what follows immediately, there's 16 bytes of AES um, IV data. So we can say AES IV is equal to TLB data um, 16. And then we can say TLB data is equal to TLB data 16 onward. And so basically what we want to do is if it's not encrypted, the TLV data starts right after. If it is encrypted, there's there's the 16 bytes and then the TLV data. So we're going to, if it's encrypted, remove that 16 bytes and then proceed either way. Um, and so in the future, uh, decrypt here. Okay, so now we'll say J is equal to zero. So we have another counter and we can say while J is less than len TLV data, uh, and for now, we're going to say, and because we're not encrypting yet, we're not decrypting yet, encryption flag is equal to zero. Um, let's, let's parse it. So basically the TLV, which, is, which, which stands for type length value. Um, in this case, Met interpreter metal really does length of type value. So, but the same idea is that these sort of triplets of um, length type value. So we'll say L is equal to int, that's from bytes, the same way we did before, TL, TLV data. Uh, j to j plus four, and we'll call that it's gonna be big Indian. Everything's gonna be big Indian here. Um, that's the L. The type is going to be int dot from bytes, TLV uh, data, and then now we're gonna be j plus four to j plus eight. So and then also still big Indian, and our value is going to be TLV data of j plus 8 to j plus l. So we're going to go to the end of the data. Um, and so now we'll print this. So we'll say print, and we can do tlv l equals uh, l, and let's, I think, also just try putting like 8 there. Um, t is equal to, we'll, put, we'll print this as hex because it might be, it's going to be a little bit easier to, to view. So we'll say, uh, like 6x, like that, now we have hex, and v is equal to, and, let, and let's print like, I think, um, we don't want to print all of v because it could get huge, so we'll say v if len v is less than or equal to 26, else v to 26, like that. And what we've done here is we basically said if if V is long, if V is more than 26 bytes, we're only going to print the first 26 bytes. Otherwise, we'll print all of V. Um, and then we have to remember to increment our J. So let's come here and we'll say J plus equals L to go to the next TLV. And I think we're in good shape here. Let's check this out and give it a try. Um, now, we're not getting anything here, but all these are encrypted and we don't see. So here we actually do have some values here at the top. Um, we can see our types going on here. We can see some values. Um, so in our response, then we get sort of the similar type, um, but not the same. Um, well, this 2001 repeats and this 1000 or 10,002, 20,001 repeats. Um, so we've got something the same there. Um, there's more we can do to pretty, pretty fine that. Um, the same as we did before. Let's come back over here. We can come out of back in metal. We're back in the TLV types here. And, um, we look here, so like let's, let's see, we have a type of 20,001 in hex. Um, what's happening is the, the way the type works is it's a com it's four bytes, but it's the, the top two bytes are set here where it represents what type of data it is, and the bottom two bytes are where we set down here with the uh, value for it. And so if we look for um, this one right here, let's see, where was I? Uh, 40,000, oh, 2,000, 20,001. Um, the low two bytes is 0001, and the top bytes is 0002. And so if we look at that, that is actually um, this right here, a uint. Um, that is 20,000, basically, in hex. And then xord with this right here, command ID. And so we have our TLV command ID, xord with the uint to be with one. And that, so this is going to be a command, a TLV type command ID. Um, I want to do this programmatically, so I'm going to 
grab up all of this and try to convert this to Python um, so that I can use it off of the C that it is right now. So we'll come up here, we'll need all of this. All right, so I got this cleaned up. Um, basically, I'm creating this TLV types thing, and I'm going to then just let the rest of this just calculate out. And so back in here, we can come up here and say um, TLV types. And now we're back down here. And when we print our TLV, instead of printing our hex type here, we're going to say TLV types of T. And let's save that. I don't know how much space that should take. Let's We'll give it a run and see what it looks like. Let's get through a bunch of my said here. And let's see. Um, back up here to the top. So we do we are seeing command ID, request ID, request public key. This is actually really cool. What we can see is before it's encrypted, the first thing the client says is, hey, here's my public key. And um, the next thing then it replies is, hey, look, here's our encrypted symmetric key that we can then use. And then look, starting now, we're encrypted. So that's that's actually pretty cool to see that, and we we can we're definitely on the right track. Um, all right, I think we're in good shape here. Now we need to figure out how to parse the encrypted stuff. Um, so we're going to need the AES key, and, and and we've just saw there's no way to get that out of here because it's using public key encryption that is not breakable. Um, so we're going to have to use something else called um, bulk extractor. I'm going to need to give it a directory, so I'm going to make a make a directory called be. And I can call it I call it bulk extractor. Um, and then I'm just going to give it, uh, was it core? Yeah. And then if you run this, it's going to say, let's go up here. Uh, o, o directory must be out, must be specified. So we will do dash O uh, BE and it's running and finish. We go into the BE. Um, there's all these files. If we look at the ones here, you know, most of them are actually zero. Um, it's actually a URL there. Let me know what that is. Um, URL dot text. Um, so we can see, hmm, interesting, I don't know what that is, curl.hex.se. But anyway, we can cat AES at keys, and it found four places in memory. Now this is really cool, because what it's doing is it's not just looking for, um, an AES key could be any 32 bytes, or, yeah, 32 bytes. Um, but what happens when you use an AES key is you use that 32 bytes to generate 15 more 16-byte uh, words, and those are, then those are used to actually do the encryption. And so... Typically what programs do is they use the 32 bytes and then immediately after come those 15 words and they just do that once and then they over and over again can reference those words. So if you can find a place in memory where for each, you just stay every 32 bytes, checking one byte, sliding your window one at a time, and then checking to see if the 15 words that follow are the ones that would be generated by this key. And when you find one, you have a pretty good chance like this is a AES key. So um, this is definitely an AES key. It shows up four times in memory. We just need it once. Um, let's go back here and get rid of our console. So we're going to come up here and say, um, somewhere at the top, AES P equals, and we'll do bytes from hex. We'll just paste that bad boy in, and we are good there. Okay, so um, let's decrypt. Um, we are going to do, let's see, so I guess we'll go here from crypto dot ciphers, I think, I think it is, C-R-Y-P-T-O, C-N-P-H-E-R's import A-E-S. I hope that's right. Let's see. Um, I'm going to have to go to Google that. If not, so we'll come back up here where we would have encrypted, and we'll say um, cipher is equal to A-E-S dot new, and we'll have A-E-S E. We will do the block um, we'll do the default. The mode is going to be uh, CDC, and the IV is going to be AES IV. And then we can do TLV data. TLV data is equal to cipher dot decrypt. And now we're going to give it um, the TLV data, um, basically sixteen on. So we can, we're basically doing our cut here. We then can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. I really feel like I imported that wrong. Let's try it though. Get no module named crypto. Um, shoot, what did I call it? I'm crypto ciphers. Um, let's, let's see. Python AES. 
capital. Yeah. From crypto.ciphers, save that. that look better. No. Um, that's like for, I'll just pause, copy, paste this. And we don't need the second from. And it's not recognizing it now. And it's looking better. Um, so we're getting our thing. We're still not. Um, oh, because we have our sort of escape here, we need to get rid of this. And we hit something. Um, so what's going on here? Uh, we are a key error where it doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's um, we'll run this again. Minus M P D B, and we will run it, and we hit our error. Um, can we see where we are? We can't. So we're oh no, we're back at the beginning. Okay. Um, one of the things I noticed while trying to solve this, I'm trying to think. I can't. Probably not an interesting way to show you how I figured that out. Is that sometimes there's padding or extra junk at the end from this, um, from this, and so. The way I figured out around this is just to do a check here and come down here and say, um, if J plus L, um, if our J plus L is too big, is bigger than, um, and we're going to add something else. So, so if it has to be enough for there to be like 16 bytes of data, um, if J plus L plus 16 is greater than len TLV data, um, continue. Or uh, I guess break is really what we want because um, we're done with this loop. We've ex we've really it's like a second way of second check here. Um, and if we do that, oops, let's try it without. Now we can run all the way through to the end and it works. Um, there's a chance I'm missing mis mis diagnosing some padding at the end there, but I think that's probably about right. And so there's all sorts of cool stuff going on here. We can actually analyze. Um, there's one more enhancement I'm going to want to make. So what we see here is a command ID and a request ID. And it seems like every uh, TLV has a command, or every packet has a command ID and a request ID. Um, the command ID and request ID are repeated back in the response, um, as well as some other stuff. Um, oh, we lost some stuff here. I wonder if that's, well, I may need to tweak that a little. We probably need to tweak that. Let's go back and tweak real quick. Um, is 16 too much? Should we do eight here, I and mean, we could just do zero. Um, let's see, where are we back at the top? Let's do up arrow into the left, so we start at the top. Um, are, we just, are we safe to just do J plus L? Yeah, okay, that works. So if, J, if it's J plus L, we'll break. Um, so what do we have here is we have our command ID, our request ID, and, and some arguments that are going to that. And then we get back some response, etc. Um, command ID is something we should easily be able to look up. Request ID, I think, is a unique thing for just sort of like this request, um, so it's not lookupable. But <clears throat> excuse me, we can go up here and um, where would that have been? I thought it was in oh, command ID is H, and we can come here. There's all these command IDs, and let's grab them down to the end. Put out of here, we can remove temp. All right, so I've got a fed command here that is going to replace all this with what I'm looking for. And so if I come back over here to MSF consts, now down at the bottom, I've got command IDs. Um, the one thing I need to do add to here is come here and define command IDs equals empty dictionary, and that works great. So back here, we can now say, open our function, uh, cmd IDs. And now when we get to a command ID, let's see. So we'll say, um, if b is equal to, and we're going to need to figure out what is, so what is, uh, we, we saw that already. What was it? It was, com it was 2001, I believe, 2001. From here, we'll say um, ox to 0001. If that's the type, then v is going to be equal to um, tlv 
data. We want the next uh, j plus 8 to j plus 12. And we're going to want to turn that into an int. So we'll say int that from bytes it's going to be big. And now that int is going to be used to reference um, the, we'll call it CMD IDs. And we can say else v equals data. Let's give that a try. Um, sometimes I should just... Nice. So whenever we have command ID, we now get the command ID, the command that's happening. So the first command ID is ne negotiate encryption. Um, the next one is to get the machine ID. And so we have uh, somewhere down here, we have a machine ID. It's pretty cool. Um, we are actually starting to see what is happening here. Um, so we can come down here. Let's see, this is enumerate external commands, a bunch of uints returned. Um, get working directory, dev shm. So we're working at dev dev shm. Um, let's see. Config UID, we are root at response. Um, so that's looking pretty cool. So um, really, this is uh, this is working out really well. Um, we've got a parsing script here that's going to parse and decrypt our traffic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this here because this video is getting pretty long. Um, what we can do, what we actually do if we come down here, is we'll see um, that at some point it opens up a channel. So it does a, it does a dir listing inside of slash root and finds a bunch of stuff. And then it's interested in... Uh, this root dot backup root dot backups dot zip, and if we then look at that down here, all of a sudden we have um, let's see somewhere coming here. So here now in this zip, we actually start reading. Here's our um, pk is equal to. I think our length is wrong here. That does not look um, like we're getting the right length printed. Let's see. We should look at that real quick well before we go, because um, we're putting i there and not l. That's that's a silly one. Let's see. There we go. That's better. Um, if we come down here, big. Um, we can see. Here we go. We start to see big. Um, here's a read request for a length of ox one zero 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 zero, and then we send that data back, basically one meg, and then we ask for another um, channel read of the same length, and this time we return less. Uh, there's another channel read request, and we return zero, empty data. Um, and so you can see we're starting to, we then send channel end of file and channel close. So what we'll do is we'll actually save this zip file off and open it up and check it out. Um, anyway, parsing, interpreter traffic, decrypting it. Um, it's actually pretty cool once you start breaking it down. Um, I had a lot of fun writing this. Hopefully this was useful and you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for sticking around with me today. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.